Asset protection is an essential skill. You need to hunker down and fortify your location from approaching hostiles in order to protect the asset. Force enemies to launch a ground assault by cutting lines of sight, eliminating their ability to target the asset from long range. Gain a tactical advantage by creating choke points and eliminate hostiles as they approach your location. A member of the SAS, Smoke, is equipped with remote gas grenades. Smoke's remote gas grenades are an effective deterrent to keep hostiles at bay. Hello, today we'll be finishing up the situations. This is uh, the first one on defense. What I'm going to be doing is setting up barricades to funnel the enemies to a specific point so I can defend that area alone. It's much more effective than trying to guard every single different entry point. This is hostage, of course. If they kill the hostage, I lose. This is not like multiplayer where if the attackers kill the hostage, they lose. In Terrorist Hunt, if the hostage dies, period, you lose. Just as it is in this situation. Steel reinforcements cannot be broken with a normal breaching charge. Only certain characters like Thermite and Hibana can go through steel reinforcements. It makes them very valuable. Smoke, his special gadget, is of course a smoke grenade that contains something akin to chlorine gas. Smoke himself is immune to it. He can walk through it perfectly fine. Everyone else takes a ton of damage from it the longer they stand in it. This includes friendlies and includes the hostage too, so always be careful when using smoke. It does deny visual, so that it does function as a normal smoke grenade too. Smoke is a two-armor, two-speed operator, making him very middle of the road. Something I didn't mention before about armor. Your armor rating also indicates how much noise your character makes when you move. Whenever you get a refill on ammo, it not only gives you ammo, but gives you another reinforcement to use. Here I am working on funneling a bit more, making sure they can't come from these entry points. Terrorists in Terrorist Hunt and in Situations typically cannot break through reinforcements made out of steel, but some of them do carry thermite, thermite charges. Those will go through. So always be careful and be ready for that. It's honestly pretty simple. You might find it a bit tough to do this situation on your first attempt or two, but once you realize where they're going to be coming from and when, it's very easy. I am more of a fan of submachine guns myself than shotguns, but for situations and terrorist hunts, shotguns can be pretty effective. Usually you only want shotguns if you're a defender, which I am defending in this case. Now, sometimes an enemy type you see in terrorist in situations is a terrorist with a shield. It looks a little weird, in all honesty. Oh yeah, I was also showing off, Smoke has a submachine gun instead of a pistol. He's one of the few operators in the game with this. But, yes, shield terrorists look a little odd. They can be a bit tricky to deal with from the front, of course. If you can flank them at all, they're really easy. I'm not 100% sure, but I have seen them with thermite charges before, as is shown right here, one was putting a thermite charge down. Whenever they're aiming, whenever a shield operator is aiming with their pistol specifically, you can shoot them in the head, because they lower the shield to do so. A 
of course, smoke here being afflicted by a smoke grenade. A little bit ironic. Have operational clearance to eliminate a high value target on American soil. This group is highly trained, well funded, and has access to military grade ordnance. They are fanatical and have no concern for their own personal safety. They have heavily fortified the area with traps and explosives designed to destroy any trace of their organization. For this situation, IQ will be deployed. She can detect electrical signals with her red make three specter. Eliminate all hostiles. Neutralize the cell. This situation took me the longest to record, even though I wouldn't really consider it the hardest. It's one of the hardest ones to rush, and I was rushing quite a lot. You can actually clear this entire amount of nitro cells right here by sprinting through. You'll take about 28 damage though, but you can make it to the other side. IQ is a three speed, one armor operator. Her special gadget is a small screen she pulls up that detects where electronics are, and it detects only electronics. Characters like Frost, they put down traps, but those traps are mechanical exclusively, so they don't show up, for example. Anything that isn't electronic will not show up. These bomb vest terrorists, the best way to take them out is to shoot them in the head. They have a ton of health, but a headshot will take them down. You'll be able to tell how many times it took me to play this one, because I'll know where all of the enemy placements are. In this situation, you're also gifted with suppressed weapons. Suppressors are very effective in Siege. They'll even work in multiplayer because of they'll hide the flash, they'll hide where the bullets are coming from, they'll hide the tracers, and they'll make less sound. And sound is so important in this game. As are visuals. And it does work on the AI. They're not able to tell exactly where I am or when I'm attacking or coming. Especially since I'm sneaking around. And yes, you can shoot through and hit nitro cells on the other side of surfaces, with IQ letting you know where to fire. Now, this situation does have a bit of a cheeky name with neutralized cell, with the focus being destroying so many nitro cells. Nitro cells in terrorist hunt and situations don't work like they do in multiplayer. With multiplayer, they have to be remote set off. In these, they're more like proximity mines. They're extremely deadly. One is enough to kill you. If you get close to them, you can back away and they'll explode. And if you're fast enough, you can take no damage, but often you'll take about at least 20 damage. It's always a good idea to use your drone to scout, even in situations and terrorist hunts. It may make it take a bit longer, but it'll often be very worth it.
due to the heavily fortified nature of this location, we have very limited intel. You need to recon the site to find an insertion point. Locate the hostage and plot a path to the target. Thermite is equipped with a brimstone, an exothermic charge that can cut through metal, granting you access through heavily fortified walls and floors. For no intel, the premise is to use your drones to scout out, but I've done this mission before, so I actually know where everything is, so to make it go faster, I just bring my drone over to a terrorist to destroy it. On this map, you play as Thermite, the situation, rather. Thermite has a special charge that can go through steel reinforcements. There is only two characters in the game who can do this, Thermite and Habana. Thermite is the only one who is in the base game. Now, this mission is going to be a bit easy for me because of it's all about gathering intel and I already know where everything is. So, this is going to go pretty fast and smooth. Well, smooth depends on your definition of it. If smooth means fast, yes. If smooth means without a problem, not exactly. Again, those bomb vest terrorists are incredibly dangerous. They can blow you up at quite a distance, too. Package is secure. Got the hostage. Get them to the extraction point. Run. It would actually be easier to escape this map normally, but for situations, they're a little bit altered. There's less windows, less entrances. Also, something I just used was a frag grenade. Thermite normally does not have these. He did in the original game. But that was patched out. Now he has flashbangs instead. Or not flashbangs. Now what does he have? He has a breaching charge and a claymore. But for the situation, they kept it in because of there is a small little, not a, a trophy, a uh, task for killing enemies with grenades. And something you'll see that I have to do here, and sometimes you'll have to do this in hostage, is drop the hostage and defend the evac zone so that you don't get taken out of the hostage doesn't get killed. When doing intel work in the field, you need to know how to improvise. A hit squad has been sent after your source and has the building surrounded. As your ammunition and defenses are limited, you will need to manage your resources to protect your asset. Cap Can is our best operator for this kind of situation. His signature entry denial devices will help you neutralize enemies as they attempt to breach.
Hostiles regrouping. Secure the hostiles. Improvised defense. It's kind of just a redo. That mission has smoke. It just. It even is a little bit easier if you ask me. We're playing as Capcan. He is a one speed, three armor operator. His special gadget are Capcan traps. You place them on doors or windows, and when an enemy crosses the red laser beam, they explode. Capcan used to have a much more apparent beam and a screw that popped out on the other side to let people know where one of his traps were. But as time went on and people got more used to the game, Capcan became kind of useless because it was so obvious. So they had to get rid of the screw and make his beam less visible. Hopefully in the background you cannot hear my dog snoring. I'm sorry about that. Uh, there's not a whole lot to say about the situation. It's just very straightforward. Sit here and defend the hostage. Again. Something about the Russian CTU operators, the Spetsnaz characters. They have different sights than all of the other characters. They don't have the regular ACOG or the regular holographic sights. They have specific Russian sights. And again, you'll see me doing this of putting up barricades in specific spots, reinforcing certain areas to funnel enemies right where I want them to so I can just have a nice killing field. I'm not using any of the Cavcan traps yet because of their one-time use each, and in something like Terrorist Hunt or a situation, they're honestly not that useful because of you could just shoot those people and not waste the traps. You want to save them for much more difficult enemies. I'm going to be saving them for dealing with the shield terrorists. Oh yeah, there's a jukebox here. Something about the jukebox, a lot of people when they stream this game or record it and put footage up, they shoot jukeboxes because they actually have tracks on them sometimes that are content ID'd so they can end up muting the video or not letting you monetize them. Something about smoke grenades is that smoke and particle effects in this game are actually client-side. So in multiplayer, when a smoke grenade smoke is going off, each player is seeing a different version of it. And that means sometimes you can get shot when you couldn't see, or you can shoot somebody who can't see you because on your end the smoke allowed vision, or on their end it allowed vision, while on the other it didn't. Now that we're on the final wave, I'm going to actually start setting up the Capcan traps. Because this is when the shield operators start coming in. And while it can be hard to hit them from the front, if they walk over a trap, they'll just explode. There you can see the effectiveness of the Capcan trap. Anyone walking through it will explode. It is possible if it's set to the lowest part of the door frame, that when you jump over it, when you jump through a door frame through a barricade, you can jump over it, but it's pretty rare and hard to do. Now, I could have just shot this shield terrorist, but I wanted to show off the Capcan trap a little bit. So I started slowly baiting them to come in.
hostage is being held at a remote location overrun by hostiles. Many have been equipped with a bomb vest. They have planted clusters of nitro cells in choke points throughout the chalet. Thatcher's EMP grenades can disable electronic detonators, preventing a chain reaction of high explosives. location and secure the hostage heavily fortified this is the last single player situation there is one more situation that is done in multiplayer it takes place in the terrorist hunt mode sort of but we'll be seeing that next update heavily fortified is supposed to show off everything you've learned up to this point but if you go to the other side of the map, you can just go straight to the hostage. I'm not sure why they didn't put the hostage more so in the middle of the map, forcing you to go through all of it. But since I don't have to, I didn't. You play as Thatcher for this mission. Thatcher is a two-armor, two-speed operator. His special gadget is that he has EM pulse grenades that disables electronics of the enemy. This does not harm friendly electronics. This does not harm mechanical devices. It only affects electronics. As you can see right there on the nitro cells. This is a mission that, again, when I first got this game, I found very difficult. So if you're playing through and struggle with this, I'm making it look a little bit easier than it really is. The hardest part of this mission is actually extracting the hostage. Going through the entire fortified installation isn't too bad. But when you extract the hostage, everyone goes outside and enemies spawn near the evac zone. Which is also back through the heavily fortified building and on the other side of the map from the hostage. But again, if you just sprint all along the outside, you'll avoid most of that. And of course, with this being on normal, the enemies aren't nearly as accurate and don't deal as much damage. So I can kind of just go up here and face tank it. And very simply done. Next update, we will be doing the Bartlett University multiplayer situation and finishing up all of the situation-related content and then focusing entirely on the multiplayer.